Hi, everybody. Rebecca and Ms. Glennie here from Good Chilton Public Library, and we are doing January's Cook the Book. And this month, we are doing meal prepping. And one of the reasons that we decided to do meal prepping was it was the start of a new year. Lots of people make resolutions in regards to maybe saving money, maybe being a bit more healthy in a lifestyle. And meal prepping can really add to that. You can budget by meal prepping, by having prepared meals and knowing that you don't have to go out to eat for lunch or for dinner. And you could also meal prep in regards to just having healthy choices available to pick right away. I really liked the idea of us doing meal prepping uh, because I liked the um, the convenience of being able to quick go to my fridge and grab something and just eat it real quick. I am notoriously bad at not bringing anything for either breakfast or lunch when I'm here at work and I get really hungry and I get a little bit of crankiness sometimes <laughs> as the day progresses, as Lenny can attest. <laughs> Uh, so I I thought that this would be really good in regards to something that I really wanted to focus on this year. How about you, Glennie? How did you feel about um, doing a meal prep program? Well, it's kind of a love-hate thing because part of me thinks, oh gosh, I'm going to have to sit, I'm going to have to chop, and I'm going to have to, oh, I'm overwhelmed by the thought, but also liking the idea of being organized and having what I am going to eat all, re all set and ready to go instead of anguishing over it and getting grumpy too. And so, uh, and we have such a nice collection at the library of meal prep books that once I started paging through them, I was very much excited and um, liking the idea. Um, and so I was less daunted than I thought I would, initially daunted and then intrigued and then curious and then jumped in. And I'm really glad I did because I'm going to do a couple more weeks out of the book that I picked. That is really neat. Um, I admit, right, the whole daunting thing, I like to sometimes just, like jump all in. And I think I tried meal prepping. Uh, I think we did it as a program maybe two years ago mm -hmm. uh, as a cook the book. And it was one of those like, got to do every meal and have all of these. And it became so overwhelming because you were trying to make all of these different meals. And so this time I focused on two areas that I really wanted to do. I wanted to look at breakfast because I generally work uh, right away in the morning. And I, if I don't bring a lunch, then at least I ate some breakfast. I also wanted to look at maybe doing like a light snack or, or light lunch in regards to that. So that as I was hitting that end of the day, uh, before I went home, I at least was not hangry anymore. <laughs> so the book that I picked was The Damn Delicious Meal Prep by Chunga Ray and Re. I think we decided it was Re. <laughs> Sorry. And I really actually enjoyed the layout of this book. Um, first of all, it had colored photos of all the different types of dishes that they were working on. Um, and what was really nice about this book is that it was laid out, uh, the Damn Delicious Meal Prep book, goes all the way from breakfasts to uh, smoothies. They have both a cold lunch section and a hot lunch section. Uh, so if you don't have maybe a microwave available to you at work, you, or uh, maybe the kids at school uh, don't have a microwave available right away and they want to be able to eat at lunch, you had other, you had different options in regards to the lunchtime. They also had a dinnertime meal prep and they had some freezer meal dinner preps in there. This book here, in addition to the colored photos, had a really nice section on the how-to, what type of containers to consider, you know, what it's like to cook in bulk um, and batch cooking and how to store. Uh, freezing and storing and storage in regards to the refrigerator for meal prepping is really important. You might want to make a whole seven days worth of meals and then find out that the stuff that you made is really only good for three to four days. And maybe even at that fourth day, you start to really get a degradation in regards to either flavor or quality of the ingredients. So the 
first recipe that I did, as I said, I wanted to focus on breakfast. Um, so the very first breakfast item that they had in here was the all-American breakfast. Um, and I chose this one because I thought this one would have the most well-rounded appeal to both myself and my family in case they decided to grab some of that um, out of there, out of the fridge. My uh, son is currently doing virtual school, so sometimes it's going to be really nice. He's not a big breakfast eater. Uh, so this way, if he decided that, that he wanted something more substantial than just like a granola bar or something to, to kick the day off, he could grab something really quick. But it would also be something that I would be willing to take and um, be able to throw in the microwave right at work. I found it really interesting because of the fact that they had broccoli um, in their dish. And they do talk about it, that the broccoli is normally, right, people think about when they do breakfast, that there's a side of fruit in there. And uh, the author felt that having broccoli was a nice way of making sure that you ensure that you get enough vegetables into your, into your day. Uh, this depends, the timeline in regards to making this really depended on how you decided to do your batch cooking. I decided to bake my bacon. And so what I did is I did my broccoli and then I did my potatoes and then I did the bacon all on the same pan. I just alternated throughout the day. Um, so, cause every, you want everything to cool enough so that it doesn't like get all moist in the container when you, when you seal it up. And so that allowed for that time. And then I just did a big batch of eggs and shredded some cheese and put it in there. Um, and I'm going to quick show you what that one looks like as I transition over to our breakfast cam. <laughs> and so I have two, I did two containers. Um, one of them, I just bought a, a pack from Amazon. Um, this one had a divider on it. So I just threw the bacon on one side. Uh, the eggs, the potato, and the broccoli. I figured that those would be all right because of the fact that I'd probably mix them up anyway. But I also had a different type of container that I wanted to show you. And this one was just a smaller one. And then I just had the potatoes and the bacon in one, the eggs and the broccoli in the other. So almost kind of omelet-like in regards. Both of them were our microwavable containers. Uh, the black ones, as I said, I bought in bulk on Amazon. I think those are the Rubbermaid ones, but there's lots of different brands um, that make those. And you can see that square one. I think that one came as part of that kit as well. Came with a lot of different ones. The second item that I wanted to focus on was that snack. And I am a sucker for Lunchables. Um, I love the convenience of them. I don't like the taste of the grocery store ones because they've sat really for a while and they kind of have that like staley taste. Um, so I thought, what better way than to make adult Lunchables? And these are really, really easy. I love convenience. So for me, I just pretty much used regular lunch meat. I just cubed up some cheese real quick, but you can buy cubed cheese if you want to. Um, I didn't use eggs in mine, uh, but I did have tomatoes in there and I have some of the almonds. And I'm going to actually show you how fast um, it takes to make that one. And you can use different types of containers. So this is the one that I used with the container uh, that I bought. And I have the Ritz crackers. I have the cube cheese. I used roast beef instead of turkey. I just threw the tomatoes right on, on top. And then I had the almonds in the second compartment. I like to make sure that the cheese is, you, is, is making a wall between the crackers and the meat so that the meat doesn't happen to make the cracker soggy because I don't like soggy crackers. But maybe you don't have the ability to either order containers or you can't find them at Walmart or whatnot. This here is just the lunch meat container uh, from Hillshire Farms. I have just a like salad uh, oil container and 
it, it's going to be really easy. I mean, I just bought a package of almonds to throw in there. And now I'm, I'm making sure those are divided just because of, once again, I don't want necessarily the, I don't want to say cross-contamination, but the cross-contamination of the food. Um, no, touching, no, touching. no touching, I know. Um, the roast beef, I just, uh, I like to rip it up just a little bit just so that it fits really nice on the cracker if I choose to um, put it on there. And I uh, just, what I did is I did blot it dry a little bit because this was pretty damp when I went and took it out of the package. And I just wanted to really ensure that I wasn't going to just get a ton of roast beef juice, right? And then I just throw in my cheese, kind of divide that. I have some cherry tomatoes. And instead of Ritz, I'll just grab, and you can grab whatever crackers are your favorites. And I would say if there's something that you like more than the other, right, go ahead and put more in there. I just, right, I didn't even make this real pretty. <laughs> and nice. then it just seals up and then it's done. I mean, nice. I did that maybe in what, a minute? Yeah, fast. Uh, the longest time that it took was pretty much cutting up, cubing up the cheese mm -hmm. in regards to that. Um, other than that, right, I, I washed the tomatoes real quick. I dried them. But everything else was just an open and throw together. Uh, so that was really nice. Yeah. And then Glenny had, what book did you end up choosing? So I chose this one. This one appealed to me because I have lots of mason jars and all different sizes. And I am kind of a glass jar at this time of year, especially after the holidays when everything's been rich and wonderful. So the January sort of feels like a nice time to explore vegetables and grains and this vegan meal prep, I thought, aha, I'm going to give it a whirl. And uh, ready to go meals and snacks for healthy plant based eating by, oh, see, I don't know, a Fields, but it's JL Fields by JL Fields. There. And what I liked about it is they talk about, it's very similar to the other book, really, um, but they talk about the um, five plant based food groups vegetables, fruit, beans, and legumes, grains nuts and seeds, those basic things. And then they put them together, they share different ingredients. And then what you can do in here is, what I chose to do, because I wanted to give it a whirl, they have eight different prep um, programs, like eight different menus you can make. I chose prep four for the love of legumes, because I like jars and I like how they did that. Um, and I didn't, I, I, I did it except for that on top, because, um, I didn't, <laughs> but I will next time. And um, I was curious to see how they break it down. So they tell you, they first, first of all, I did my grocery shopping one day and then the next day I did the prep because I personally find if I'm gonna go shopping and prepare, I will never do it again. <laughs> That's my own personal tip. So go shopping one day and then do your cooking and prep the next day for me. And this is very, I want to show you some pretty pictures because that's very drear. But they had um, step by step and they had flipping back and forth. That's why I have all these little things. So they tell you to first prepare. Well, first, let me tell you what the um, menu is. So one recipe is mashed potatoes and kale with white beans, page 70. Then there's a quinoa and kale bowl, page 81. Then there's a white bean and sun-dried potato dip for snacks, page 115. Then there's roasted chickpeas, page 131. So there's a lot of flipping. And already I was like, mm, I don't know. But I got my little toasty things and I tried it and I flipped back and forth. And I was so impressed that within one and a half hours, oh. I had eight lunches and, or, um, and some snacks. So the first thing I did was the mashed potato and kale with white beans and I followed all the flipping back and forth. So I did that and um I'm just gonna show you. We're gonna while you're doing that, we it looks like two of our cameras froze. So I'm gonna switch I'm gonna flip okay. the laptop while you are doing this so that oh, everyone can see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Um so just hold on with us for one second. I apologize if it gets a little loud with the mic. 
um, while I turn around, now you're going to see our messy room. Yes. Um, this way, Glennie can tip <laughs> this down. Okay, down a little. I can do it. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So for the first thing I did was I made the um, quinoa salad, which perhaps doesn't look as lovely because I don't have my greens on top. That's not the quinoa salad. The quinoa salad is over here. But um, I really like how they're just jarred in one cup um, portions. And um, it was so much fun to cook and come up with all these different treats that you could eat throughout the, the day. So this is the quinoa salad that I made that I had for breakfast this morning. And then I had the mashed potato and bean um, spinach. They used kale in all of their recipes. I chose spinach. It, you can mix it up however that works for you. And then um, the other thing is the simple act, similar to what you were doing in your um, lunchables in baggies, getting your veg baggie of vegetables in, and then your dip. So the um, and then there's also this wonderful thing that we made in the oven, which are these savory, um, crunchy like like you would use them like croutons, um, uh, garbanzo beans with lots of yummy spices that you bake in the oven. Those are delicious, but I, I made the mistake of refrigerating them and they got kind of soggy when they first came out of the oven. They were really crispy, so what I would do is I'd leave them crispy and not refrigerate them. Um, so that was really yummy. Then the veggies, there's a dip. It goes with the veggies. Shall we try it? It's white beans, it's garlic, it's sun-dried tomatoes, and I'm going to move the mic just a little yes, let's so that, that it's not so, so bad for everyone. Yes, we're going to save. <laughs> oh, plugging in would be good, wouldn't it? I can do that for you. <laughs> Power. Here we go. So now you can do this as smooth or as chunky as you like it. I love immersion blenders because you could make the dip right in the jar that you keep it in. So you're doing your dip in your jar. And then you could um, put it in a little thing like this or whatever, whatever. Um, if you're doing it for your family at night and you have it on the table on a board, you can pick whatever jar or storage thing you like. Um, one of the things they, they did encourage you to do, because I, I, everything I got was from a grocery store, nothing special. But they did encourage you to think about two flavors you might want to try. T try two things that maybe are outside of your wheelhouse. One of them was nutritional yeast, which I personally adore. And the other one is miso, another one of my favorites. And those are components of the sort of umami flavor um, category, that fifth flavor, savory, yumminess thing that is quite wonderful. And so those miso is think sort of a pasty, bouillon-y, salty, rich, plummy, wonderful thing. And um, it's really good for gravies, for making gravies and um, nutritional yeast. So I did not include those in this panoply of things, but you could make a gravy and serve it for dinner over your mashed bean and potato spinach melange and, um, and make it yummier. So sometimes when you make one thing, you can serve it again the next time with a little sauce to amplify and just change it up a little bit to make it yummy. So this is a, this has umami element in this deep, in this deep, is the um, sun-dried tomatoes, or, or sun-dried tomatoes. Now, if you can't find sun-dried tomatoes, you could put a bruschetta paste or something salty and yummy in there. So I would say that I definitely recommend this meal prep book because it kind of woke up my, it woke me up. And um, and it has me going, I'm going to go next week, I'm going to try this. There's a Mexican version. Come on over. There's a Mexican version. There's a cowboy caviar salad. I want to do that. And um, it's gotten me excited about healthy eating at, at work, which normally is not so healthy. <laughs> so I'm excited. I would recommend this book. 
Um, but I'm going to keep it for another week because I have another week to go. <laughs> and I would definitely recommend uh, this one as well. Um, if you're looking at starting the meal prep process, this gives you a really good breakdown as to how to get started mm -hmm. and some really easy recipes, which was really yeah. nice. And we do have quite a selection of um, meal prep books here at we the do. library. So um, give it a whirl. I highly recommend it. Um, I was a little reluctant and begrudging, but it's a really smart way to go. And I am now a convert. Yeah. So and it, it ties and really nice to our charcuterie program yes, that we did, did last month. Really you, the dip can go on there. Yeah, it really can. In essence, you're making a to-go right. charcuterie board sometimes with some of these yeah. dishes. The other thing is you can also use this if you're not up to the meal prep. I, I did also make, I made a, um, a chipotle cabbage salad out of here that was delicious. And I have made a couple of other things in here just as a recipe for dinner without thinking of doing the prep part of it. So it can also just be a recipe book, too. Um, I did not have not yet tried anything I did not like out of this book. So that's nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. that, that's always the best, because yeah. sometimes you look at some of them and you're like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Like when you said kale, I I right. don't, I'm not a kale fan. Yes, I know so I was, when you that's were like, I substitute. I, <laughs> I did that for you. Thanks. <laughs> and um, And I like kale out of my garden, not so much out of the store. Yeah, I, so. maybe someday. I don't yeah. know. Maybe I've just never had it right. Well, you don't have to like it. <laughs> so um, by all means, um, give it a give it a try. And uh, yeah, okay. um, what we would like to do is we still have a Vern's gift card to give away. Ooh. We had nobody post charcuterie boards yeah. last month. So this month, if you post in the comments uh, a picture of your meal prep that you did, in one of your containers, maybe, we are going to do a drawing for a Vern's gift card. Great you idea. do need to be able to pick it up in person from the library um, or be in our service area so we can mail it to you uh, if you want to win that. But if you aren't in our service area and you happen to see this video and you'd like to still post, we'd love to see what everybody does, either out of these books if you want to check them out or there's lots of different resources you can use. Pinterest, there's lots of different meal prep blogs mm -hmm. and whatnot as well. So don't feel like you're locked into just what's in these books. You can pretty much make any meal that you like into a meal prep program. Mm -hmm. Great. So thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you guys next month and seeing your photos on here. We will be picking our February Cook the Book in just a few days. And so we'll get that posted so everybody knows what we're going to be doing. So thanks for attending, everybody. I'm going to move out of the frame so that I can shut the ca camera okay. off. Yes. Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys all next month. Sounds like a plan. Oh. So, hope to hear from you. Win that card.